All right, Alexander, let's uh, talk real quickly about two court cases. One is a court case of the past between the uh, UK, the Queen, Queen of, uh, of England and Australia. And uh, I'm really interested to hear your take on it because this is a pretty popular story in the UK and Australia right now. And uh, it's got a lot of history to it. And um, the only comment I'll make is the royal family is really going through a really, really hard time right now. God, a lot of a lot of stuff is coming out. We'll talk about that uh, story. We'll lead with that story. And then let's also talk about another uh, court case that is taking place right now, one we've covered in great detail, but we have an update, and that's the one on Sullivan and Flynn. Not so much an update, but more of a, of a statement of fact that Sullivan is just not doing anything after no. a decision by another court telling him to do something. No. No. So, Alexander, let's get into the Queen's uh, secret letters. I read a headline from The Sun which said, uh, top, secret, top secrets, potentially embarrassing letters to reveal what the Queen really knew of Aussie mm. PM's sacking that sparked a 1975 crisis. What's the story? Yeah. Yeah, let's let just explain it to people who are not uh, obviously British or Australian. It's still a very sensitive subject um, in Britain and even more so, much more so in Australia. Gough Whitlam was the leader of the elected Labour government of Australia. He was starting to pursue an independent foreign policy for Australia, which was disapproved of by the by you know, powerful people in Britain and to some extent in the United States. And he was also pursuing a very controversial reform policy within Australia itself. So he became the subject of numerous attacks. And then suddenly and unexpectedly, I say numerous political attacks, and then suddenly and unexpectedly, the Queen's Viceroy. Now, it's important to understand that Australia though a uh, independent country it, it used to be part of the british empire and the queen of britain elizabeth ii is is and remains queen of australia so she has a viceroy in australia who represents her now he completely unexpectedly out of the blue dismissed Whit whitlam called a new election, there was a new election, a new government came to power, Whitlam was out, and that government uh, uh, reversed policy and brought Australia back to into line alignment with Britain. This had a huge impact in Australia because it meant that a British official, an, an, an official not elected by the Australian people, was changing the government of Australia. He was in effect overthrowing the gov the elected government of Australia. And many people in Australia felt that this was essentially a coup against their elected government. They've never forgotten it. And it led to a huge increase in Republican sentiment in Australia against Britain, which has continued to this day. I mean, where Australia and Britain had been very close before, there, a, a distance has been created which has lingered. So it's been a debacle. It was a debacle. And always there's been this speculation about what the Queen herself knew and whether she was involved in this extraordinary and very dangerous and reckless decision in any way. And what we now see is court decisions being made basically to keep her involvement secret. And that, I think, is going to persist for a while. But sooner or later, Probably, my guess is after she's dead, all the truth will come out and we will know whether she either whether she approved this decision or whether she knew about it in advance or what happened uh, and, and how this decision was made. My guess is, and I get to say what I think, my guess is that she was informed in advance and advised by her government in Britain to support this decision. And uh, she, she always does what the British government tells her to do on these important, sensitive foreign policy issues. She went along with it. And that, I think, when people find out about that in Australia, which one day they will, it will strengthen their desire to become an independent republic. You mean to move away from the Queen? To move away from the Queen, to become a fully independent republic, right. rather like uh, um, Ireland 
is to, you know, the Republic of Ireland is today. That's what I think will happen. Does that have does that have any implications outside of the fact that they're just not subjects of the Queen? I mean, any economic? It, 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 or, I mean, what's the what are the practical implications of that? It, it, it will have huge psychological implications. It will mean for the British, and you know, at a time that uh, Britain is already you know adjusting its relations around the world, that a country which many British people feel still is almost a part of themselves, they feel so close to Australia, is moving away from them. It will be a big psychological blow, and it will be a massive psychological blow to the British establishment, who will feel that in a very true and profound sense, they have lost Australia. I'm going to say something. For Australia itself, I think it would be the right thing to do, actually. I, 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 I unequivocally believe that. I think keeping this system in Australia with the Queen of Britain, still the Queen of Australia, is an anachronism. I think Australia is an absolutely vibrant country. I think it should elect its own leaders, uh, sort out its affairs by itself. I think this connection with the British monarchy is outdated and obsolete. It can remain, if it likes, a member of the British Commonwealth, which means that it can still you know, receive the royal family, but it doesn't have to be subjected to them and subjected to them in a way that exposes them to events like this. All right. Very interesting. Let's shift gears to uh, another court case, one that is dragging, and that is Sullivan and Flynn. What's the latest update there? Well, I mean, Sullivan's behavior is becoming ever more bizarre and ever more extraordinary. As you rightly said at the beginning of this program, to, uh, you know, was it two weeks ago? The uh, uh, Court of Appeals of the D.C. District granted an order, made an order of mandamus, uh, which ordered uh, Sullivan to dismiss the case against Flynn as both uh, the Justice Department, which is prosecuting Flynn, and Flynn himself are asking because the Justice Department now accepts that Flynn is an innocent man, that he's he was not guilty of the crime that he was charged with and which he was coerced into pleading guilty to. Now, Sullivan was refusing to uh, was refusing to dismiss the case. He was appointing an alternative prosecutor. Uh, Sidney Powell, Flynn's lawyer, sought an order for mandamus from the D.C. Court of Appeals, and they granted it. They said, you know, to Sullivan, what you're doing is completely wrong. You mustn't do it any further. You must go ahead and dismiss the case against Flynn. So he waited two weeks, and now he's come back, and he's told the D.C. Court of Appeals, you are wrong. And I want the whole case reviewed by the full court. Now, this is crazy. I don't think it's going to get anywhere. I'd be surprised personally if the D.C. Court of Appeals agrees to even consider this request for a rehearing. But the point to make is, even if it is uh, reheard, I'm confident that the D.C. Court of Appeals will throw any, any uh, this, this application by Sullivan out. Sullivan is grandstanding. But by doing so, what he is doing, again, is exposing the intensity of his bias against Flynn. All right. Very interesting. Alexander, you have that Australia mug to show real quick? Absolutely. About of, course I do. of course I do. Uh, uh, this is a, this, one, yeah. I, I, it's, it's a country, by the way, that, as I said, British people feel very strongly attached to. Uh, uh, you know, the Australians fought very bravely. Uh, alongside the British in the in the two world wars. Uh, many Australians will know about the Battle of Gallipoli that was fought. Uh, with um, Mel Gibson. You know, absolutely, absolutely. With Mel Gibson, absolutely. And, you know, it's a bitter battle in which a lot of Australians, by the way, feel that the British let them down in many ways and, you know, with, with good cause. But as I said, the British, British people have overwhelmingly positive feelings towards Australia. And just as a matter of interest, which may interest our Australian friends, the British High Court, when it looks for precedence overseas, the first court it looks to is the High Court of Australia. It considers the Australian court so prestigious that it's, it sees it as the second most important uh, common law court 
in the English speaking world. So that's how strongly British fe people feel about Australia. And I share those feelings and you can, I'm delighted and proud that the flag of Australia is there on one of our Duran mugs. The new magic mugs. All right, you can find that at duranshop.com. You find certainly can. Underneath, underneath this video. Thank you very much, Alexander. Take care, everybody. Yeah.